In this lesson, we're going to talk more about the different players in the auditing profession. Obviously, we have the public accounting firms. They are the ones that supply the audit opinions to clients who are required to have them or are enlightened enough to demand them. Public accounting firms range in size from sole practitioners to multi-billion dollar firms such as KPMG, Deloitte, e &Y, and PwC, the so-called Big Four. Public accounting firms are structured to ensure their independence and competence. This helps to mitigate the litigation risk, the risk that they get sued. The great thing about working in public accounting is that there's a well-defined organizational hierarchy and lots of promotions. So you will start obviously at the bottom as an assistant staff accountant and then move your way up through the ranks as you become more senior. The business of auditing relies heavily on leveraging staff levels. Partners will bill out at rates that range from $400 to $700 an hour, whereas new audit staff may bill out for $100 an hour. Unfortunately, of the $100 an hour you charge out at, you'll quickly realize that only a small portion is making it to your paycheck. So obviously, the idea for the firms is to have the lower level staffs do as much of the audit work as possible. And this leaves the higher levels of staff and partners to supervise and evaluate your work using their savvy professional judgment. I'll refer to the warm fuzzy feeling a lot throughout the course but simply it refers to that moment in time when the auditors have seen enough evidence that they feel confident that the information has been presented correctly. You know for the heartless unfeeling sorts the audit firms have developed detailed checklists and procedures for their audit staff to perform so that no stone is left unturned and little is left up to professional judgment of junior staff. So the firms are one player in the audit profession. Let's next talk about the professional accounting bodies. In the United States we have the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. That is the organization responsible for setting US gap and gas. In Canada, the Canadian Institute of Chartered Accountants does something similar on its own as well as in conjunction with the International Accounting Standards Board. Auditing standards for public companies are also the responsible of two newer organizations thanks to the likes of Enron and its cronies. That is, in the United States we have the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, the PCAOB, and in Canada we have the Canadian Public Accountability Board, or the CPAB. These organizations are focused on auditing standards for publicly accountable organizations and largely enforce compliance by conducting practice inspections at audit firms. These two organizations are funded directly by the public company vis-a-vis -a, -vis a surcharge on their annual audit bill. The discussion of accounting bodies can be long and complicated, but really you don't need to know much more than that. The key reason you need to know about them at all is you need to know who sets the standards because the standards are always changing. And speaking of rule makers, our last group of folks in the audit profession are the securities regulators. In the United States, this is the Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC. In Canada, it's the Canadian Securities Administrators. However, many of the securities regulations are set by provincial regulators. The Ontario Securities Commission or the OSC being the most notable as many public companies are listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Securities regulators have their own sets of rules that public companies must adhere to. These are different rules than those of the accounting bodies, though there may be some overlap. For instance, both have disclosure requirements for related parties. However, the definition of a related party varies between the two sets of rules. These rules create incremental disclosure requirements, such as your management discussion and analysis, continuous disclosure requirements through press releases, and quarterly and annual filing requirements. And while not a regulator per se, keep in mind that the stock exchanges themselves have a hand in monitoring and oversight as well. The stock exchanges have rules around listing requirements. They also monitor and approve certain information and transactions that could or potentially affect the trading of the shares or securities. So there you have the players of the auditing profession, and that's a lot of stakeholders to be mindful of. I've hardly scratched the surface, because to be honest, there's other international, national, state, provincial institutes, committees, agencies, commissions, that all have a role to play in setting the rules, regulations, standards, and monitoring compliance. But between you and me, I don't think all that much about them. 
which means you probably don't need to either at this point. What you do need to know though from this quick snapshot is, number one, where do you find relevant audit standards? And two, where would you find applicable regulations, such as the Sarbanes-Oxley Act in the United States? I'll close by telling you that the accounting bodies and the regulators use practice inspections to keep the auditors honest. For the auditors, this means that building a strong audit file is of critical importance to the partner. I'll leave it there for now, so until next time, don't stop to get to the top. When you get to the top, don't stop.